The Harvard University ID badge clipped to my blazer caught the afternoon sun as I stepped out of my rental car at Riverside Park, the same park where the Castellano family had held reunions for 30 years, the same pavilion where two years ago I'd been the cautionary tale, the family failure, the one who threw it all away. My name is Isabella Castellano, and at 32, I'm the youngest tenured professor in Harvard's Department of Computer Science History. But my family doesn't know that yet. They're about to find out. The sound of familiar voices carried across the parking lot. Uncle Tony's booming laugh, Aunt Maria's sharp criticisms, my mother's nervous chatter trying to keep peace. My stomach tightened the way it always did before facing them, but this time was different. This time, I wasn't coming empty-handed with excuses. I was coming with vindication. Two years ago, I'd made the decision that scandalized the entire Castellano clan. I dropped out of my PhD program at State University. After eight years of grinding through academia, following the path they'd all laid out for me, I simply stopped. Mental health break. I'd tried to explain at that disastrous family dinner. Mental health. My father, Dr. Vincent Castellano, chief of surgery at Riverside General, had scoffed. That's what your generation calls quitting. My brother Marcus, the golden child with his MBA and corner office at Goldman Sachs, had been even crueler. He'd posted on Facebook that night. College dropout at 30, what a waste. Some people just can't handle real pressure. Sad to see potential thrown away. Hashtag family disappointment. 157 likes. 43 comments. All from family and their friends, dissecting my failure. What they didn't know, what I couldn't tell them through the fog of burnout and depression was that I discovered something in those final months at State. While procrastinating on my dissertation about conventional database architecture, I'd started playing with an entirely new approach to quantum computing algorithms. My advisor had dismissed it as too theoretical and career suicide. So I left, officially dropped out, moved into a studio apartment that made my mother cry when she saw it, took a job at a bookstore to pay rent while I worked on my theory at night. Bella's having a breakdown, I'd heard Aunt Sophia whisper at last year's reunion. Vincent is beside himself. All that education wasted. She could have been something. My grandmother had sighed, patting my hand like I was terminally ill. My cousin Elena, fresh from Harvard Medical School, had tried to be kind. Maybe you could go back? Finish your degree? It's never too late to fix mistakes. Fix mistakes. As if my entire existence had become an error to be corrected. But while they whispered and worried and posted their disappointment for social media validation, I was working. 18-hour days fueled by instant coffee and obsession. My studio apartment became a cave of whiteboards, equations, and code that looked like madness to anyone who didn't understand what I was building. The breakthrough came at 3 a.m. on a Tuesday. I'd been awake for 40 hours straight when the final piece clicked into place. My hands shook as I ran the simulation one more time. The results were impossible revolutionary. Correct. I published the paper independently on AR-14, the open access repository where serious researchers shared preprints. No university affiliation. No advisor's name. Just I, Castellano, and 40 pages that redefined what quantum computers could theoretically achieve. Within days, my inbox exploded. MIT wanted to fly me out. Stanford offered a visiting position. But the email that made me cry came from Dr. Sarah Winters, head of Harvard's Quantum Computing Initiative. Your paper is the most significant advance in our field in a decade. We need to talk. Isabella, there you are. My mother's voice cut through my memories. She hurried across the parking lot, her face a mixture of concern and embarrassment. You came. I wasn't sure, after last year. Hi, Mom. She hugged me tightly, then pulled back to study my face. You look different. Are you eating? The bookstore job, is it enough? Your father has a colleague who needs an office assistant. I'm fine, Mom. Actually, I have some news. Later, okay? Let's just get through lunch first. Marcus is here with Jennifer. They're expecting again. Her voice carried that careful tone she used when trying not to highlight my failures. And Elena brought her fiancé. He's also a doctor. Of course they were. The pavilion was packed with Castellanos and their success stories. My father held court near the grill, discussing his latest surgical innovation. Marcus dominated another corner, loudly explaining cryptocurrency to trapped relatives. Elena showed off her engagement ring, a rock so large it could be seen from space. And then there was me. The dropout. The cautionary tale. The waste. 
Bella, Uncle Tony spotted me first. How's the bookstore? He said it like one might say prison. Actually, leave her alone, Tony, Aunt Maria cut in. Not everyone can handle real careers. Some people are meant for simpler things. I felt the familiar burn of humiliation, but this time it came with a chaser of anticipation. Let them talk. Let them assume. The reveal would be even sweeter. Marcus noticed me and smirked. Hey, sis. Still finding yourself? He made air quotes. Jennifer's brother is hiring at his startup. Entry level, but beggars can't be choosers, right? That's kind of you, I managed. We worry about you, Jennifer added with fake concern. Living alone, no real job, no husband. Your biological clock is ticking, you know. Jennifer, my mother warned weakly. What? Someone has to say it. She threw away her education, her career, everything. For what? To work retail. The crowd was growing, family members drawn by the scent of drama. I saw my grandmother shaking her head sadly. Cousins whispering. My father wouldn't even look at me. You know what the saddest part is? Marcus announced, pulling out his phone. I posted about better opportunities for her on LinkedIn. Trying to help. But she doesn't even have a profile. In 2024, who doesn't have LinkedIn? Someone with nothing to brag about, Cousin Roberto suggested. They laughed. Actually laughed at me. My own family. That's when Dr. Sarah Winters walked into the pavilion. Six feet tall, silver-haired, wearing a Harvard blazer despite the heat, she commanded attention like gravity. The laughter died as everyone turned to stare at this elegant stranger. I apologize for interrupting, she said, her Boston Brahmin accent cutting through the silence. I'm looking for Isabella Castellano. Every head swiveled to me. That's, that's me, I said. Sarah smiled warmly. Excellent. I know we plan to meet Monday for your orientation, but I was in the area visiting family and thought I'd stop by. She looked around the pavilion. I hope I'm not intruding on your gathering. Orientation, my mother whispered. I'm sorry, Marcus stepped forward, using his Goldman Sachs voice. And you are, Dr. Sarah Winters, chair of the Quantum Computing Initiative at Harvard University. She extended her hand, which Marcus shook automatically. I'm here to welcome Professor Castellano to our faculty. The silence was absolute. You could have heard a napkin drop. Professor, my father finally managed. There must be some mistake. Isabella is a college dropout. She works at a bookstore. Sarah's eyebrows rose. A dropout? How interesting. No, Dr. Castellano. Sorry, should I say the other Dr. Castellano? Your daughter is quite possibly the most brilliant mind in quantum computing today. Her paper on quaternionic algorithms has revolutionized our understanding of quantum entanglement. Paper? Elena squeaked. What paper? Sarah pulled out her phone, showing the screen. Published eight months ago. It's been cited 847 times already. MIT and Stanford were in a bidding war for her, but we're delighted she chose Harvard. This has to be a joke, Marcus said. She dropped out. Posted about it. Everyone knows. What everyone should know, Sarah interrupted coolly, is that Isabella has achieved something remarkable. Tenure at 32 is almost unheard of. The youngest in our department's history. But when you solve one of the fundamental problems in quantum mechanics, exceptions are made. My mother sank into a chair. Tenure? At Harvard. Mom, I said gently. I tried to tell you. I have news. The ceremony is Thursday, Sarah continued. Isabella will be giving the keynote at the International Quantum Computing Symposium next month. The president of MIT will be introducing her. She smiled at my frozen family. You must be so proud. But she dropped out, Jennifer insisted, as if saying it enough times would make it matter. From a program that couldn't recognize genius when it was sitting in their classroom, Sarah replied. Their loss our gain. Uncle Tony found his voice. How much? I mean Harvard professors. Starting salary for tenured professors in our department is $250,000, Sarah said smoothly. Of course, with Isabella's consulting work for tech companies implementing her algorithms, I imagine she'll do considerably better. Marcus's phone clattered onto the picnic table. Consulting, my father asked weakly. Google. IBM. A few startups you wouldn't have heard of yet, I said quietly. They need someone who understands the practical applications. The patent applications alone, Sarah added with a wink. Well, let's just say Professor Castellano won't need to worry about money. Patents. My grandmother had found her voice. Isabella has patents? 
17 filed so far, I admitted. With more coming. Sarah checked her watch. I should go. Isabella, the dean is hosting dinner Tuesday to welcome you properly. Black tie. She surveyed my stunned family. It was lovely meeting you all. You must be incredibly proud to have raised such an exceptional woman. She left the same way she'd entered. Like a force of nature leaving devastation in her wake. The silence stretched until Marcus, red-faced and stuttering, managed. This, this can't be real. I pulled out my new Harvard Idaho and set it on the picnic table. The crimson logo gleamed in the sunlight. You called me a waste, I said quietly. A disappointment. A failure. You posted about it. Laughed about it. Made me the family cautionary tale. We didn't know, Elena whispered. No. You didn't ask. You assumed. When I said I was taking a mental health break, you mocked me. When I moved to that studio, you pitted me. When I took the bookstore job, you wrote me off. Bella, my father started. Professor Castellano, I corrected. I've earned that title. We were worried, my mother tried. You dropped out. From a program that was killing my soul and dismissing my ideas. Do you know why I really left? My advisor told me to give up on the theory that just got me tenure at Harvard. Said it was too ambitious for someone like me. Someone like you? Aunt Maria echoed. A woman. A Latina. Someone who didn't come from academic royalty. He wanted me to stay in my lane, write a safe dissertation, be grateful for scraps. I stood up, suddenly exhausted. I chose to bet on myself instead. And while you were all posting about my failure, I was doing the hardest work of my life. Alone. Without support. Without family. That's not fair, Marcus protested. We're family. We were trying to help. By humiliating me? By calling me a waste? By laughing at my pain? I pulled up his Facebook post on my phone, showing him his own words. The comments from family beneath it, each one a knife between my ribs. Do you know what got me through those 18-hour days? I asked. Spite. Pure spite. Every equation I solved, every breakthrough I made, I thought about this moment. About proving every single one of you wrong. Bella, please. My grandmother reached for me. I love you, Nana. But even you gave up on me. She could have been something, you said. Past tense. Like I was already dead. Tears ran down her weathered cheeks. I'm not asking for apologies, I continued. I'm not asking for anything. I came today to say goodbye to the Castellanos who see me as a failure. Because I'm done trying to earn your approval. You're still family, my father said stiffly. Am I? Because family shows up when you're struggling, not just when you succeed. Family believes in you when you say you need to take a different path. Family doesn't turn your pain into Facebook content. I picked up my Harvard Idaho. I start teaching in two weeks. My first graduate student is a refugee from Syria who taught herself quantum mechanics from YouTube videos. My second is a kid from rural Alabama whose high school didn't even have physics. You know what they have in common? They're brilliant, and everyone told them they couldn't do it. Just like you, Elena said softly. Just like me. And I'll make sure they never feel what I felt. Never have to prove their worth to people who should love them unconditionally. I turned to leave, then stopped. Oh, Marcus? Since you were so concerned about my LinkedIn presence, I pulled out my phone and showed him my profile. 847 connections. Endorsements from Nobel laureates. A featured article about women in quantum computing. I've had one for a year. You just never looked for Isabella Castellano, PhD. Because in your mind, I was still the family failure. The last thing I saw before I left was my brother's face, cycling through shame, anger, and something that might have been respect. Too little, too late. The drive back to Boston was peaceful. My phone exploded with texts, apologies, congratulations, invitations to dinner. I turned it off. They'd had two years to reach out with kindness. Success shouldn't be the price of family love. My apartment, not the studio anymore, but a nice two-bedroom near campus, felt like sanctuary. The walls still covered in white bards, but now with a view of the Charles River. My Harvard contract on the desk. My life, my choices, my victory. The next morning, I had breakfast with Sarah at her favorite cafe in Cambridge. How did it go? She asked. About as expected. They were shocked. Family often is. We expect people to stay in the boxes we put them in. They kept saying they didn't know. As if that excused everything. Sarah sipped her coffee thoughtfully. You know what I find interesting? You published under I. Castellano. No first name. No university affiliation. Just the work. I wanted it to stand on its own merit. 
And it did. But I wonder, were you also hiding? I considered that. Maybe. From them. From their judgment. Well, you can't hide anymore. Thursday's ceremony will be public. Your work is about to change the world. Ready for that. More ready than I was for my family reunion. She laughed. Academia is brutal, but at least we're honest about our competition. Families pretend love is unconditional while keeping score. They do, don't they? The question is, what now? You've proven them wrong. You've reached heights they never imagined. Do you let them back in? I thought about Marcus's Facebook post. My father's dismissal. The laughter. The pity. But also my mother's tears. My grandmother's shaking hands. Elena's whispered, just like you. I don't know, I admitted. Maybe someday. On my terms. Fair enough. Now, let's discuss your research budget. Two million enough to start. I nearly choked on my coffee. Two million. You're at Harvard now, Isabella. Think bigger. Think bigger. Something my family never let me do. Something I'd had to learn alone, in a cramped studio, with nothing but spite and brill boards to keep me company. My phone buzzed. A text from my mother. I'm sorry. For everything. Can we talk? I stared at it for a long moment, then typed back. After the ceremony. If you want to come. It wasn't forgiveness. It wasn't a bridge rebuilt. But it was a start. On my terms. In my time. The girl they'd called a failure was gone. In her place stood Professor Isabella Castellano, youngest tenured faculty at Harvard, quantum computing pioneer, patent holder, and proof that sometimes the best revenge isn't just success. It's becoming someone even you didn't know you could be. The family reunion went silent when I showed up with my Harvard Idaho. But the real silence? That came from within. The quiet confidence of knowing I'd saved myself. No family approval required. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video. Stay stunned.